The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all of those kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, who command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone? Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dr. Luke spends a great deal of his gospel writing in identifying Jesus. Luke is attuned to his first century audience and to the 21st century reader. That's the power of the living word. Those whom Jesus encountered face to face and those who pondered 100 years later always asked the question, who? Is Jesus, and may I say it was even in the fourth century during the creed time. Who is Jesus? And yes, we still ask the question today. In the Gospel of Luke, remember that angels in the second chapter tell the story in private and on the open fields. Faithful prophets and prophetesses tell the story in the temple. Voices from heaven tell the story. Jesus tells the story as God Almighty calls a summit between Jesus, Moses, and Elijah on top of that mountain on transfiguration. Those whom Jesus heals at the foot of the mountain after that moment tell the story of just who Jesus is. Luke constantly shows us the tug in this word-made flesh reality. Jesus' family witnesses him teaching in his father's house in the temple. Some years later, his family and his friends will hear him utter the words, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And as, and as his family abides with him at the foot of the cross. The end of Luke chapter 3 it gives an interesting ancestry of Jesus that tells quite a story. As Luke declares that Jesus is about 30 years of age and he is beginning his public work, he then lists Jesus' ancestors, starting with he was the son, as was thought, of Joseph, son of Heli, and then in begat, begat, begat fashion, son of, son of, son of, you can read the list, and at the end of the long list, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. 
to see what Luke does there. Every bit of what Jesus will do in his public ministry has to do with who he is and whose he is. In our familiar temptation of Jesus' gospel narrative that we just heard today, we hear the tempter casting doubt on Jesus' identity and Jesus' purpose in relationship to creation. There's a little bit of a familiar tone there, a little bit of a familiar smell there from the Garden of Eden. That whole idea of you're missing out on something here. What's God trying to hide from you? You have the power to be your own God. Just who are you? Anyways, just who is God? It's amazing who the devil thinks the devil is in this passage. The tempter is really messing with the living word. He's quoting scripture. In the end, Jesus once again reveals just who God is. The very essence of God. In the Christ hymn in Philippians chapter 4, that he does not exploit others for his own gain, but he gives himself for others. On Ash Wednesday, we were reminded on Ash Wednesday that we are named children of God in our baptisms. We are forever united with Christ in life, death, and new resurrection life. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. We were created from the dust of the earth. God blew life into us. One day we will die, and our bodies will return to the dust of the earth. In our baptisms, we are forever connected with the one who was likewise born of the dust and returned to the dust, but was resurrected to new life. As we progress in our years, as we meet new challenges, new puzzles along the way, as we hit life's speed bumps and detours, as we have had our world turned upside down over the last couple of years, and we live in new realities, the question will always arise, who am I? Who am I? It always seems to be in our weakest moments that the tempter gets us to ask that question. I must confess that over the last couple of years, my questions have come in dreams of the middle of the night and didn't the tempter come just last night in my sleep. Sometimes I wonder, though, I wonder if it's the tempter or if I wonder if it's the Holy Spirit leading to ask the question. Luther had a plaque set up in his room for just such an occasion. Remember your baptism was the plaque. And when he had these moments with the tempter in the middle of the night, he would say, I am baptized, I am baptized, I am baptized. Watch. Identity. Who am I? In the middle of the night, my identity is in Jesus Christ. As we continue our walk through the Lenten pathway, no matter what new territory we tread on, know that the answer to these very commonly asked questions is, it, is that we are beloved children of God. Every bit of what we are called to do in our baptismal vocation has to do with who and whose we are. God will lead us. God is faithful. Let us pray again. O oh Lord.
Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness, and you brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and